Good morning, Rolling Hills. I pray all are doing better. I um, I am finally starting to feel better, and uh, I praise God for that. I, I know I've been talking to a few, and um, there's been some improvement here and there, and I'm I'm thankful. So before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father, thank you, Lord, for each and every person, God, that looks up and trusts you and obeys you. Help us all, Lord, to just bow down and, and to be all that we can be for you, even during all this difficult time. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, for the sick and the well. I pray for uh, Brother James as he's had surgery on his toe. I pray, Lord, he'll be doing much better very soon. Thank you, Lord, for those that have recovered so well. Brother Ralph feeling better. Different ones. Miss Janice. Thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. I, I wanted to <clears throat> still have trouble in my throat, but uh, I hope and pray you can understand me well enough. Very soon, January 22nd, uh, is Life Sunday. Uh, President Ronald Reagan issued a proclamation uh, for the third Sunday of every January to be this day, National Sanctity of Human Life Day. Um, for us to remember, all the babies that have been killed, all the babies that have been killed since then. It was back in 1984 that this issue. And so we started slaughtering babies in 72 and we've not slow, slowed down. If you think about it, there's 62 million babies have been, been slaughtered in the womb and, and some out. I mean, you know, they don't, they don't want you to know it, but they'll, they'll put a towel, wet towel over a baby's face if they're born alive, things like this. I mean, it's, it's horrendous. Um, even 14 million black babies, you know, all these, everybody's kind of upset because somebody killed a, a black baby and you're, there's 14 million black babies that, that are dead now. <clears throat> Nine robe, black robed men made a decision, not all of them, but the majority of them made a decision. They pulled this uh, abortion thing out of thin air because it's not in our constitution. We have a life, a pursuit of life and, and not not of death, but uh, they felt it necessary that, you know, that people can do this. Uh, I, I'd, like, I'd like to just kind of start off thinking about this. You know, in, in Luke, we, we recently read the, the story of Jesus Christ. And I think I'm gonna read that again. And in the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind that what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Think about that. The marvelous, the marvelous uh, event that brought our savior was through birth, life. God made life in the beginning. God created the heavens and earth. And we, we should all, we should all be thinking about, you know, just, just what that means to each one of us. We can look up in the sky. I mean, lost people, the Bible says, you can look up in the sky and see the, the magnificent clouds and the magnificent stars and sun and moon and all these things that, that absolutely have a, a design only by a, an entity that is greater than anything else. And there can only be one of them, that being God. And so he chose to use the birth 
of his son to come to this world. But it didn't take man long. Adam and Eve began to have children um, early on, you know, in, in history. And, and of course, Cain killed Abel. So they created a slippery slope and we have been sliding down that slope for a long time. Man has been slaughtering each other back and forth, back and forth. I, in Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, before I formed thee in the, in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I, ord I ordained thee a prophet unto me. In Isaiah 49, 1, he says, the Lord hath called me from my womb. From the bowel of my mother hath he made me mention of my name. Do you understand that God has a reason for every one of y'all to be here? And what you're doing will honor him or dishonor him. Well, he didn't care about, he does care about you. When he tells you that I know I formed you in your mother's belly, I have a reason for you to be here. All 62 million that have passed, and everybody else here now, right now breathing. Sometimes we kind of, we put God aside and we don't put him where he belongs. He belongs in the number one spot, not behind us, not behind somebody else, not behind anything. He and he alone should be number one in our life. Do you love God more than anything else? Or have you chosen to, to, to have something that is more important than God, be it work, family, you know, friends. What, what would you put aside for God? It should be absolutely everything. But God put me here to, you know, to live my life. He put you here to honor him because he made you. No one, no one should feel that they're not special. We treat our children in this world horribly. We put them to one side. We, we, we told them they were stupid, told them they were dumb. We told them they're ignorant. We told them everything. And we don't even take the time to teach them the word of God in Christian homes. I'm not saying Normandy Park, excuse me, Rolling Hills, because I don't know. But I've watched it in other churches, and I've been befuddled to think of what why would people not understand God? He wants you, father, mother, to teach your children about God at home. Not just Sunday school, not just church, but at home also. You know, talks about teach these things diligently unto your children. When you rise up, when you lie down, in your house, when you walk outside, these are times that we're, we're to share with our children. We're to teach them about God. We're to teach them about Jesus Christ. We're to teach them that it is more important to be his subjects. But back to, back, back to some of the problems in Israel, they, they began, um, once they came out of the out of Egypt and, and all that adultery and everything, they were to, to leave all of that behind. And, and uh, they get into the problem. Finally, they, after 40 years walking around in the desert and God let 40, you know, anybody that was 20 or older die because they, they rebelled against him and rebelled against him, rebelled against him. You'll notice you keep up your rebellion and God ultimately, you know, he corrects you or, or moves you on. And I, I encourage you to think about, do I have my little fist up in the air? Or do I do I I want to do God's will? You know, it, it really it, it it just breaks down that way. So the, the children of Israel go into the promised land. They got everything. They got grapes and animals and houses and I mean they, they destroyed a few things, but a whole bunch of it was left there because God said, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm not gonna give you too much, but I'm gonna let take care of you. But immediately they began to to kind of they did not do what they were supposed to. They were supposed to erase everybody in, in the promised land. They were to kill them because God had given them, those people 480 years to look up and trust him, and they didn't. Well, the Israelites, they kind of liked what they saw. They liked the, the women and things of this nature, and so then they were, they were distracted. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they began to, to do things they were not supposed to do. Let me just read a couple of them. Leviticus 18.21, God saw it coming. 
and thou shalt not let any of thy seed or, or child pass through the fire of Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord, I am, excuse me, name of, of thy God, I am the Lord. And Molech was the chief deity uh, of the Ammonites. Um, it was like a king, you know, that, that was the station that he had, but then he grew and he, he became a god. So in, in Leviticus 22, it says, again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn Israel and give any of his seed child unto Molech. They, they had this big statue and had a big hole in it. And they would throw the child into the hole. And the child would scream and die right in front of the parents. Now, can you imagine? I, I don't, I would go berserk if somebody tried to do that to my child. And I pray you would too. But see, we sometimes throw our children away anyway. So think, think where we're throwing them. It goes on. It says, he shall surely be put to death. If, if you're the Israelite that's doing this, God's already told you, you you're not going to live because I, I'm going to take care of you. Can you imagine a God? They know all these things that God did, how he killed people and moved them away and put them in a hole and all kind of stuff. And they still believed it was better to do it the way these people were doing. The idol worshipers, Moloch worshipers. So it says, the people of the land shall stone him with stones. And that's what they should have done, but they didn't do it. Now, we go down to 1 Kings eleven seven. 7. Then Solomon, remember, one of the smartest men in the world, King David's son, God loved him. God put him on the throne. So it says, then Solomon built, built, built in a high place for Chemosh, another god, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that was before Jerusalem, and for Molech. So in other words, he just started bringing in all these outside deities and idols and all this kind of stuff for the wives that he'd been by, been marrying. Can you imagine? The abomination of the children of Ammon. And in Jeremiah 32, so you see over the centuries, and they built the high places of Baal, another outside idol, which are, the, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass, now sons and daughters, or pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither it came into my mind. God never, never even, he didn't want anything like this, that they should do this abomination to cause due to the sin. Amos 5, 26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Molech, and chin, another, another idol, your images, the star of your God, which you made yourselves. See, man has to make these things up. Remember the statue was with the hole in it. Somebody had to make that. Uh, all these little silver idols when Paul was in, in Ephesus and places of the snakes. Everything, man, man's imagination. Not smart enough to look up and trust in God. Last one, Acts 7, 42. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven meaning that they would worship stars, moon, sun, everything. They just failed to keep looking. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrificed by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? And they had, no, but yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your, your god Repham, another idol. Figures which were made to worship which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And that's what he told them. That's what he did. He took them away. You know, he brought them back and they stopped worshiping things of this nature. But they had, they had spent hundreds and hundreds of years doing this. But you know, the world's filled with this. We think of the Aztecs down in Central Florida. They sacrificed. They built great temples and threw people off. And they had these big holes they'd throw the virgins in and and. and gold and stuff like this and you know to get to get to God to do something for them you know what do we do do we sacrifice to people that will do something for us I suggest to you that that um, our country's kind of built on that we we tell one group well if you take care of me I'll give up my liberty 
Think about it. You know, if you feed me, I'll be okay. God wants you to be on your own. Now I know, I know we all work together and things of this nature, but just think about it. when when we bring one group in that is taking something, and that group has been doing this since 72. They brought it in. Before that, they were killing killing people right and left in the South. We had a war to stop the slaughter and to stop slavery. And, and look, look, at, look at now, even now we're being accused of being horrible people. God wants us to even vote right. I know, that's terrible isn't it. Africans, you know, they, they were, had cannibalism, a form of sacrifice because they believed that they ate the soul of that man or their body. They, they, they'd get his spirit and his strength and things of this nature. Southeast islands, same thing, cannibalism. Man does not see God's creation in, in each of us. He, he doesn't see the wonder. You know, if you've ever been to an eye doctor and you ever get to look through a slit lamp at your iris, you'll see a little bead, a little golden bead all the way inside of your eye. It is a magnificent. God put it there. Everything about us, he's put it there. Why would we trade that in for nothing? For just blase, it doesn't matter if people die, doesn't matter if abortion, you know, things of this nature goes on. So weaker vessels are taken advantage of. Hitler hated the Jews. Homosexuals, I mean, he, he was just... You know, all around nice guy who wanted to kill everybody. Well, he goes along, Muslims come along, they throw homosexuals off rooftops, they chop your head off, they cut your head off with knives, things of the, you know, cleansing to make sure you you stay in the religion that you're supposed to be, or you you'll die. You know? Jews had the light, but they chose the darkness. It's usually which way we go. Without Christ, there's only there's only one way or the other. It's either with Christ or in the dark. God wants us to follow him. King David followed God. His son Solomon, so very blessed, very smart, richest, richest king in the world, uh, followed God until he began to start marrying women from all over around him. And they brought all these gods into Israel. Um, the wives so affected Solomon that he he was just affected to no end that he couldn't contain them. He couldn't hold them back. He was too weak. Their their religion was stronger than his religion. So he, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like somebody tells me why well, I, I kind of backslid. Well, let me tell you something. I, I believe I believe most everybody backslides because it's an everyday deal fighting sin. But every day we should be repenting of sin. We should every night make sure we go back over and ask God what's in our heart so we can repent of sin. We can walk with Christ because he's made us, made us a way. It's when we decide that, oh, it's no big deal. It was just a little sin. I, I don't need to repent about it. I don't need to talk to God about that because it's just a little sin. Everything's a big sin. And, and when we allow one little sin come in and grow and divide or destroy us, is it worth it? God wants us to love him and stay right with him. Why does he say, come before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need? Because we need grace all the time. So Moloch was killed, brought in to kill babies. Just think, God warned Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, all these different prophets, and they'd go and they'd talk. Why do you think a lot of them were killed? Because they would confront these these heathens uh, worshiping on the idols and things of this nature. You know, you think about Gideon. You know, God told him, "Go up and cut that grove down and throw all that all that mess they worship around. Throw it in, throw it away. Get it out of the way." He was a little afraid. Of course, when they came to to burn him at the stake. His dad stepped down and said, well, why don't you let, you know, why don't you let the Baal come down and, and talk for himself instead of you running your mouth? Because if Baal's so strong, why 
Why didn't he stop him from doing it? Reason, God's reason. But they brought brought all this back. Think about it. We'll come forward, I don't want to spend the night. But, um, America, uh, we, we started out, we, a lady named Margaret Sanger, she is uh, one of Hillary Clinton's um, uh, heroes. That's what she called her some years ago. Well, she started Planned Parenthood, and uh, now that's a six hundred million dollar uh, corporation, and they slaughter babies, and they they have done it all over America. Uh, most of the most of the abortion areas are within just minutes of black neighborhoods. I you know, wonder why, because Margaret Sanger sees she was a eugenist. She wanted to kill all the blacks, or at least alter their fertility, so they would not be so many. She and Adolf Hitler would communicate about how to do this. How do we get you rid of the Jews, nasty people? And how do we get rid of the Africans, blacks, nasty people? Well, the truth, they're God's creation, both of them. One chosen, the other one's chosen too. Each of us, are, each of us have a place in this world and we need to see it just for that. Think about that. So Margaret Sanger, she, she purported to, you know, this is back in the, 20s and 30s and all this. And she was just absolutely bound to change the way we look at people. In fact, it was called the Negro Project. Um, I mean, actually had a project to get rid of blacks. What arrogance, what condescending arrogance. There's nobody better than you and nobody worse than you. We're all the same. We may we may act, talk, look, think differently, but in God's eyes, we're all the same. We're his children. Do you don't think he made you? Well, I didn't come out of Johnson Johnson's baby food plant. I came out of God putting me through my father and mother together and creating me in a, in a womb. I pray that you understand that completely. God is in charge of this. Now, the selling of body parts now, we don't, we don't, we've skipped right on into the big time. So now they make a fortune at Planned Parenthood on if they save, you know, the liver and the brain and all these other things or spleen. So I, I'm not sure all, but lungs. I know, I know later in abortion, they, they can use a lot more and all this and eyes. Think about that a minute. They're making money off abortion not only killing the baby up front, but then to divide. And, and the, the group called Veritas who recorded all these braggarts saying, I'm gonna get a, a big, nice car because I've sold body parts and all. They went after him and sued him for millions upon millions of dollars for uh, privacy. They didn't do anything with the abortion areas, nothing. Think about the hardness of the heart of America. It's a movie, there was a magazine some years ago called The Miz Magazine. And Eleanor Smeal was the editor and our owner. I'm not sure which, I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. I kept a little note on it, uh, 2006. She wrote an article that says, get women's lives back in the picture. So she wanted, she wanted all the women that would to put their name in this article. So there's 5,000 women signed this article says, I had an abortion and I'm great. Now think about that a minute. Bragging on killing your baby, what God gave you, killing your baby. One day I walked into a, a x-ray office, one of my accounts at the time and, and this lady was visibly upset. She was an older lady, you know, younger than I am now. And she said, and I asked her, I said, well, what's wrong? She said, well, my daughter has to have an abortion. I said, oh, my word, why? She said, well, she's not married. And she's real ashamed. And I'm ashamed. And I, you know, you don't know what to say exactly, but I said, what's worse, shame or murder? And I think I threw cold water in her face. I didn't want to hurt her, but I, I needed to jolt her into reality. You're going to kill a baby because your daughter had obviously sex out of wedlock. But that, 
that can that can that can that's a baby that's a beautiful gift from God even when it came the wrong way in the sense of without marriage but that's happened a few times in our lives another friend of mine we we went somewhere and he was telling me how his wife's gonna have an abortion I said what he said oh yeah uh we're going on a trip and she's gonna have the abortion so it won't mess up our trip and I and I thought I thought he had more sense than this. But think about that. Just the, the lack of compassion or empathy or anything over that baby. Why would he do that? Oh, the lady in the x-ray office was members of Baptist churches, ashamed. Many of the ones that have had abortions that have regretted it, I, I, I had people in my church that had it and in the past and I've talked to people outside of the church that have had abortions and and now the regret is horrible. The regret is, is mind numbing sometimes. And and I and I I go back to them and I tell them, you know, it's sin. You can repent of it and, and God will forgive you. I, I'm I believe that that will still be always a whole uh, anguish that you can't really get over in, in one sense, but in another sense, you know, God loves you and he, and he wants to take care of you. So if you've had an abortion and you know it's been rough, um, then you can repent and you and I can talk. Uh, I've spent a lot of time helping women and, and, and couples and things of this nature because it affects most everything after a while. Um, I'm sure there were, as I said, been will be memories. But what could have been? A quick read for you. Um, would you consider abortion in the following situations? There's a preacher and wife who are very, very poor. They already have 14 kids. Now she finds out she's pregnant the 15th time. They're living in tremendous poverty. Considering their poverty and the excessive world population, would you consider she get an abortion? The second one, the father is sick with syphilis. The mother has TB. They have four children. First is blind, second is dead, third is deaf, fourth has TB. She finds she's pregnant. Again, given the extreme situation, would you consider recommending abortion? Number three, a white man raped a 13 year old black girl and she got pregnant. If you were her parents, would you consider recommending abortion? Number four, a teenage girl is pregnant and she's not married. Her fiance is not the father of the baby and he's very upset. Would you consider recommending abortion in that case? Um, if you choose abortion, if you choose abortion in any of these, here's what would happen. In the first case, you have just killed John Wesley one of the greatest evangelists of the 19th century. In the second case, you have killed Beethoven, the musician. In the third case, you would have killed Ethel Waters, the great black gospel singer. If you had said yes to the fourth case, you would have declared the murder of Jesus Christ. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Think about all the things that have happened. Jane Roe of Roe versus Wade, she wanted to reverse that, that decision by the Supreme Court for the damage that she did. Uh, Norma McCorvey, now she's passed away, who joined the anti-abortion fight years and years ago. And she knew there was a, a horrible negative effect of abortions on America. And it has been, I think 62 million people out of our country. You know, um, amazing. God created life. May we all pray, ask God, asking God to even this late day to reverse our killing of babies. May we stand up if it's only one day against the darkness, each of us, I pray, will pray and ask God 
to, to reverse it as I've asked. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. It implies that he did everything right on down to the scale of my dry hand. He did it. Who do you think's in charge? I pray you know it's Christ. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you. I pray my brothers and sisters will look and think and act upon these words that we will become lighthouse for all those in the dark. Help us to find young ladies that, that believe they, may, they have to have an abortion. Help us love them, help us to care for them. Help us to celebrate light. Help us, Lord, to, to help one another with our, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren in some cases. Help us, Lord, to be the church that absolutely reaches out and touches people's lives. Help us, God, I pray. Let us not be sitting back and doing nothing in anything, God. Help us to do your will, I pray. I pray all this in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Hope to see all very, very soon.